the vastly underrated Cincinnati pitching staff divided the spoils of 102 triumphs. Seven hurlers won 10 games or more. The young man who won 11 and saved 26 was the fireman of the year, Raleigh Eastwick. Veteran Gary Nolan led the staff with 15 wins. Pitch. Ground ball to shortstop. Big hop for David. He'll go to first, and this one belongs to the Reds. Gary Nolan, his seventh complete game and becoming the winningest pitcher. On the Cincinnati staff, his 15th victory of the season, 5-2 over Atlanta. Nolan walked just 27 men in 239 innings. Rookie Pat Zachary was a blessing from the Reds' farm system. Among his 14 victories were 10 over Western Division rivals. He was the Dodger killer, beating them five times. The 2-0 pitch, swung on and popped in the air. Shallow left center, Concepcion trolling, and this one belongs to the ref. Here in the ninth inning, the Dodgers go out in order as Pat Zachary has pitched himself a true masterpiece tonight. He gets his first major league shutout as he defeats the Los Angeles Dodgers by a final score of 9 to nothing. Zachary clinched the division title for the Reds at home September 21st against San Diego. Plummer hanging the sign as the runners lead at first and second. The rookie right-hander comes set. He checks the runner at second. He delivers. Allman strike three call, and this one belongs to the Reds. The crowd on their feet and standing in appreciation of Pat Zachary's pitching job tonight as he gets a glad hand from Sparky Anderson. They flash it on the message board in center field. Best in the West again in 76. As the Reds have won their fifth Western Division Championship in seven years with a 9-1 victory over the San Diego Padres. Zachary's rookie teammate, Santo Alcala, chipped in with 11 wins. He stymied the Mets with the first shutout by a Reds rookie since 1972. He's back to the plate. And it's a smash that Morgan has on one hop, flips to Tony, and this one belongs to the Reds. What a fine, fine pitching exhibition by Santo Alcala here at Riverfront Stadium this afternoon as he gets congratulatory pats on the back and handshakes from his teammates. He has blanked the New York Mets on four hits. It is a 2 to nothing Cincinnati victory. Fred Norman ran his glittering record at Riverfront Stadium to 33 and 10. He turned out the lights on the Dodgers for one of his 12 wins. The left-hander studies the Johnny Bench sign. He rocks to the windup, sends it in, and strike three swinging. And this one belongs to the Reds. Freddie Norman has done it again as he pitches the Reds to a 3-2 first game victory over the Los Angeles Dodgers, shutting them down in order in the ninth inning, and the Reds now enjoy their biggest lead of this 1976 season at 10 full games. Norman's earned run average was 2.38 in late July. Jack Billingham also won 12 and finished strong. Don Gullett rebounded from a muscle disorder to become the seventh Reds pitcher to win in double figures. He beat the Dodgers in September. You might look for some good Gullett smoke on this pitch coming right now. The one and two to Paisley. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. And this one belongs to the Reds. Don Gullett. Chalking up his ninth victory of the year in a rude going performance. Pitching one hit baseball over the final six innings of play as the Reds drop the magic number to four with a four to two victory over the Dodgers. In the bullpen, Pedro Borbon was defendable in a variety of situations. Rookie Manny Sarmiento was five and one at age 20. Will McEnany and Joe Henderson contributed to the effort. Catcher Bill Plummer, who saw considerable action early in the season, had a memorable seven RBI game and some big hits. The 3-2 pitch. Swung on. Long drive. Left center field. That is going to be the third home run of the inning. Unbelievable. This has become a veritable home run derby against Stan Wall. First Perez, then Geronimo, and then bye-bye baby on a blast to deep left center by Bill Plummer. Ed Armbrister enjoyed a two-home run day against San Diego. 1-0 delivery, swung on, that's hit well to left field, and they looked up, no doubt about that, and that is way out of here, and Ed Armbrister hits his second home run of the ball game, and identical, he took the first pitch the first time up, hit the next one out, and the same thing happens here in the third. Well, Ed Armbrister, his second home run of the ball game, and the Reds lead it 2-0. Bob Bailey swatted two in a July game. 
Bailey with a high fly ball. Left field. Well hit. Howard back. It's gone. Bob Bailey with a second long ball of the night. And the Reds have jumped out in front 7-6. to six As Bob Bailey puts on a home run exhibition here at Riverfront Stadium. Mike Lum led the club with 10 pinch hits. One beat his former Atlanta teammates. The 1-1 from Devine. Lum swings, ground ball, that's it! By Montanez and into right field, and with Perez scoring, this one belongs to the Reds. Dan Dreesen squeezed 44 RBIs out of his 54 hits. One was a pinch homer in September. Danny with a 1-1 swing, oh, hits yeah. a fly I'm ball, a deep I'm right out. center field. That here. ball is gone! Well, Danny Dreesen has done it again, a second pinch hit home run of the season. And that one, an absolute no-doubter as it rolled out of here at the 385 marker in right center, and the Reds go out in front at 8-5. Joel Youngblood had a four-hit day against the Phillies. Slick fielder Doug Flynn took his turn at the plate, too, in a sweep of San Diego. The pitch to him. Swat out line to center field, a base hit. Here comes Johnny Bench. Here comes Tony Perez. The throw to the plate, not in time. It's five. And a two-run single for Doug Flynn to get the Reds up by three big ones. That five-game sweep of San Diego was one highlight of a season marked by good, steady baseball. The Reds won no more than seven straight, dropping no more than four straight. They were at their best in important games such as a four-game set in Los Angeles, when the second-place Dodgers could have sliced their lead to five games. But the Reds claimed all four, one on a hit by Dave Concepcion. Runners leading at every base. Swung out, ground ball, David. base hit into left field. Here comes Foster, here comes Johnny Bench. A two-run single by Concepcion, and the Reds lead it by three at six to three. At the close of August, there was a festive World Series move for the playoff preview with the Phillies. The Eastern Division leaders won the opener despite Dreesen's pinch homer. Swung on, long drive, deep right field, we got a tie ball game. Well, I'll tell you, he's not been a good pinch hitter this season, but he just made up a whole bunch of ground. He shot that baby into the green seats and right, and we're tied at four. The next night, Joe Morgan turned himself loose, and the Reds broke the Phillies' dominance. Morgan and Bench, a double steal attempt. Boone's throw down to second. No! Here comes Morgan to the plate! He is going to be safe! Joe Morgan and Johnny Bench look up on a double steal, and Morgan never broke stride. Cash taking the throw as Bench came in the side door, and Dave was not paying any attention at all to Morgan until it was too late. Until then, the Reds had lost seven of nine to the confident Phillies. The next game, Concepcion struck a game-winning blow in an eight to seven triumph. It is seven six Philadelphia, bottom of the ninth, with the bases loaded, no one out. Reed, calm, cool, and collected. Come set. He works. Davy swings fly ball. Left center field, and this one belongs to the Reds. A gapper into left center field by Davy Concepcion off of a two strike pitch from Ron Reed, and we win it. Ken Griffey ignited a crowd of 51,000 the next game when he gave the Reds their third straight conquest in the 15th inning. He swings his ball over the mound. That is blocked by Cash to throw to first. Not in time, and this one belongs to the Reds. Ken Griffey with a bouncing ball up the middle. The Dave Cash played behind second, but his throw to first was not nearly in time. With Concepcion scoring, the Reds in 15 have defeated the Philadelphia Phillies 6-5. Individual pride made things happen for the Reds in the dramatic season finale. Don Gullett worked five brilliant innings in a playoff tune-up. Unfortunately, Jack Billingham hurt his arm in a similar tune-up. Ken Griffey was overtaken by Bill Madlock for the batting title when Madlock got four hits. But on a positive note, Joe Morgan pinch ran for one shot at his 60th stolen base. Top field shading Davy around toward left with a big gap in right center. There goes Morgan. Pitch is taken and the ball knocked the glove right off the hand of Dale Murphy. He wanted to come up firing and I'll tell you, the velocity of that pitch simply separated the glove from Dale Murphy's hand. So Morgan gets his 60th steal in easy fashion. 
Tony Perez, in his final at bat of the season, needed a hit to reach 90 RBIs for the 10th straight season. Tori Alba comes set and pitches. Perez, a base hit into left center field. Here comes Doug Flynn. Here comes Bob Bailey getting the green light, and he's going to score a two-run single for Tony Perez. He's got 91 RBIs. And so it ended, just as it began, with offensive fireworks. The Reds won 11-5 on opening day, and a record 2,629,000 fans later, they closed with an 11-1 conquest October 3rd. Johnny Bench forgot the club's best record in baseball quickly and looked ahead to another world championship. In 1921-22, Giants were the last to do it in the National League. It'd be a great feather in our hats, and I think that's what we're all looking for. And if, uh, you know, if the good Lord's will and the creek don't rise, we'll be there. In the next five days, the tension grew for the championship series opener in Philadelphia.